Hey, what's up, folks? In this project, we're making a MIDI instrument with CircuitPython. This is a fun project that lets you create melodies using MIDI notes and lets you play with modulation and other parameters. This uses the MIDI Featherwing, so you can plug this into any instrument with a standard MIDI jack. There's a built-in 3-volt optocoupler, so you can interface with MIDI using Feather's 3-volt logic. The 128x64 OLED lets you display text and graphics so you can see the values and parameters. With Stemma QT, you can easily add a display to your projects to plug and play. To start playing, press the push button. You can adjust modulation to change the shape of the sound. The note division lets you adjust the length of the notes. You can switch between different modes like minor and major triads. Dial in the key of the pattern to create your own arpeggios. Use the slider to adjust the beats per minute. Blinka also nods her head along with the BPM acting a lot like the metronome. To make these sounds, I have this plugged into my micro Korg synth using a MIDI cable. The MIDI out from the Melody Maker connects to the MIDI in port on the back of the micro Korg. The Featherwing Doubler lets you plug in two featherboards and has plenty of pinouts. This project uses the Feather M4 Express and the MIDI Featherwing. This allows the project to be more modular, so it's easy to swap out the feathers. You can get the parts to build this project, links are in the description. We designed the enclosure to be made from pieces of wood and acrylic. To make sure everything fits, we use 3D models of the electronics. We set up user parameters so we can quickly adjust the size so it's easy to scale it up. Manufacturing models allow us to set up stock for each part so we can set up toolpaths for CNC milling. We only need two end mills to cut the pieces and use 2D contours and pockets to create the holes and outlines. 3D models of Adafruit parts are on GitHub, so please feel free to use them in your projects. This uses the MIDI library for CircuitPython. The code for this project was written by Liz Clark of LitCity DIY. It's nicely commented so you can change up the MIDI notes and create new modes or control different MIDI CC messages. The REPL serial monitor lets you see the values change as you adjust the potentiometers. This is a great way to debug your code or get feedback from the parameters. Definitely check this out if you're interested in making MIDI projects with CircuitPython. To cut our parts, we use the Other Mill Desktop CNC from Bantam Tools. I cut wood and acrylic stock to size so they would fit on the spoil board. I also made some decals using our Cree-Cut vinyl cutter. An eighth inch flattened mill will do all of the wood milling. I used Nitto tape to secure the piece of wood to the spoil board. I faced the top and bottom of the wood stock so it would be nice and level with the spoil board. I think the one eighth inch flattened mill is great for wood because it can do a max depth cut of about a millimeter. After facing the material, I proceeded to run the next job, milling out the pockets. With the acrylic being an eighth inch thick, the slots are perfectly sized for this tool bit. Tabs from the acrylic panels will press fit into these slots so everything fits together. The last operation is a 2D contour which creates the outline of the part. These wooden side panels ended up being 12mm thick. After the milling was complete, I made sure to vacuum up the sawdust and thoroughly clean the mill. A bit of alcohol softens up the tape and a thin spatula lets you pop off the piece from the spoil board. I did some light sanding on these edges but overall a nice cut from the other mill. I created a second side using similar procedure. On to the acrylic using a 16th inch flattened mill. This tool is ideal for cutting our acrylic panels. I used double sided scotch tape to adhere the acrylic to the spoil board. Milling the acrylic took a bit longer than the wood because the max depth is about 0.1 millimeters. The top panel has most of the mounting holes, a slot for the slider, and a cutout for the display. Again, using a bit of alcohol to remove the acrylic from the spoil board. The top panel looks really nice in this frosted purple color. Next up is the bottom panel. For this, I used a dark purple colored acrylic. Using the same tool, I made very similar cuts, mostly the outline. I switched over to an engraving bit so that I could engrave the CircuitPython logo onto the bottom panel. My engraving tool is a bit dull, so it left behind some burred edges. I ran the engraving operation a second time and found that actually cleaned most of it up. If I were to do this again, I would probably try a deeper engraving to make the cut really pop. After a bit of cleanup, the parts are good and ready for assembly. 
I left the wooden sides and finish, but I'm thinking I might add some shellac to make it really pop. I made some labels using a Cricut vinyl cutter for the top and back panels. I applied the vinyl to the acrylic and used the holes as registration marks to line them up. A squeegee helps knock out any air bubbles. Slowly peel away the transfer tape and be careful not to lift the edges of the vinyl. This holographic vinyl has a mirror finish that changes colors at different angles. I did a quick dry fit of the parts before panel mounting the components. The potentiometers are panel mounted using the included hardware. With everything wired up, the panels are press fitted into the slots of the wooden sides. So if you want to build something like this, be sure to check out the learn guide. I hope this inspires you to check out CircuitPython for your next musical project. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to subscribe for more projects from Adafruit.